a modular PlayStation 5 and our one year anniversary. Let's talk about that. Hello and welcome to Triangle Squared, a PlayStation podcast. I'm your host, Brett Beck, and alongside me, Mr. Sawbridges, bringing you a lucky and congratulatory episode 52. Uno, year. uno, euro. One full year, 52 weeks. That's how we roll. Yeah, man, 52 weeks. Can you it's believe been it? It's a wild, wild, wild ride. One thing that has wild, like wild been waste. made extremely evident to me throughout all this is that with us doing this, time flies by way quicker. Because I feel like what used to, like a month used to take a long time. And I like have more time in that but month. But now there's four of these. But now that I do this, it's like, I don't know. There's something about doing it that just makes the rest of my time seem like it's just slipping away. But hey, at least it's a fun use of it. Uh, that and all the platinum grinding I've been doing. I will have burnouts by the end of the night as long as the online trophy will work for me. But... Speaking of that, before we move into that, this is Triangle Squared, a place for podcast. If you've never listened to us, we post to YouTube on a video format every Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific and 12 p.m. Central Time. And we post to podcast services like iTunes, Google Play Music, all of that mess um, for you to just listen to if that's the way you prefer to do it. And Saul. I, for, I closed out. Yes, no. sir. Yes, sir. Now that we've gotten through that, let's go through. You know, this is going to be like, let's hit our let's hit our segments and, and get this going. You know, this is our one year. Look, now we can you, we can view our first episode of this and be like, look how much better we are now. So, anyway, saw so what have you been playing this week? I've talked to you lightly, but yeah, we got to hang out yesterday and that was pretty fun. But uh, spent a lot of time on Divinity Two. Um, now that's the one thing I knew you've been playing. Yep, uh, I stayed up quite a lot. Oh, not last night because I was playing something really cool last night I don't want to talk about. But um, stayed up uh, a couple nights this past week, uh, pretty late playing it. Uh, and of course, didn't play Monster Hunter too much. To the contrary, um, I normally play it quite a lot, but I played it once or twice with you guys and Ryan and John. But yeah. um, realistically, Divinity, that I restarted Dark Souls 2 just to kind of chip away at the trophies for that because I know that that is between Dark Souls 2 and 3. That is the uh, Dark Souls game that has the least amount of trophies. And, of course, Dark Souls 1. I'm going to get the platinum for all of those since I have it for Bloodborne. Here's but, your problem. Unless they do a Demon Souls remastered, you're always going to have one that's technically part of the universe. Hey, I'll have all Dark Souls, though, so I don't care. It'll be Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, platinum done. But then you have Bloodborne. Yeah, but if I, I, if I wanted to So you have one the of the Soulsborne, Outliers, yeah. but not, not the other one? Huh? No, I was gonna say if I was gonna include all the Souls born, Souls I just born. I thought it'd be cool to have all the Dark Souls specifically. But um, speaking of Dark Souls, something I have been doing on PC, and uh, big old shout out to a YouTuber slash Twitch streamer Lobos Junior. He is a really cool guy. I've been watching his streams, and I got this idea for him. But I have Dark Souls three on Steam, and I you know I've been kind of playing it off and on for a little bit, but. Something he did, and something I stole his idea from, and I've been doing, is that you use Cheat Engine, right? I do not know what that is. It is basically a software you can download, and it's uh, you can run multiple cheat scripts and kind of, you know, hack games, per se. Um, and, of course, I play this offline because I don't want to be invaded in Dark Souls. But I'm running a randomizer cheat, which means that every single shiny on the ground is random except the key items. And <laughs> I am doing a use what I see run. So if I see a shiny, I have to pick it up and I have to use that weapon or armor until I get a new one. And it's been super fun. So basically the idea of the whole Pokemon thing where you use a Pokemon until, well, I mean, it's a little different, I guess, where you, you can catch the first Pokemon of every area that you come into and then you can only catch that. that that's not, You have to catch the first one that you encounter. Except you can pretty much always use Pokemon. You can't always use the things you pick up in Dark Souls because you're stats. That so, is true. So, so the very first thing I picked up in Dark Souls 3, the very first shiny item, when you walk out of being the spawn, you kill the one little training NPC, and then behind you there is normally a, um, it's well, it's like one of the first tier consumable souls that you could pick up in the game. Yeah. It was a great sword. Of course, <laughs> I did not have the strength to wield that. So I did no damage with it, barely. And so it's really fun. It kind of has you go out of your way and kind of play differently because I know of shiny spawns in the games, and I know 
where they're at. But since I did not see them, I don't have to pick them up. So I kind of leave those in case I need them. Because he he's done this with Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. Uh, this is one of those times I kind of wish Bloodborne was on PC. Because this would be amazing to watch somebody do on, on Bloodborne. Even yeah. though there's not a... There's not a a huge, huge selection of weapons compared to Dark Souls. Yeah, yeah, that was um, actually one of the things that the weapons and armor in comparison were kind of lower. To it's be fair, to be fair, this is one of the things I liked about it is that in the Dark Souls series, there was always the armor that was objectively better. Yeah, and you're like, okay, I will put this on because it's objectively better. But one of the great things about and it, it probably wasn't designed this way on purpose because from the get-go, but it, I'm sure that it was at least whittled down to, okay, th- this is what our time constraints give us, but if we're going to do it this way, every piece of the armor that's in that game is all really balanced to itself, but in different stats. So it's like what you're wearing, re- like I went through the entire game with the Hunter's equipment because yep. I did not feel the need to change because everything else I was doing didn't really lend itself to my play style any better. Yeah, well, that's the cool thing about fashion souls, as people call it, is that you can literally pick up armor set you like that looks cool. It may not at all benefit you, but you could still beat the game with that armor set on. And there, um, in the speed run I did, I beat the game uh, using a armor set that you get it's a full pickup armor set and i forgot what it's called it might be the hunter's garb but it's like it's right outside cathedral ward like yeah when you get to cathedral ward and you're one to the left and then there's those those lantern guys that walk around with the the shiny sticks and stuff yep. it's it's over there in that corner next to the tombstones i pick up that equipment set and i pop that on and that's what i use that entire run but uh for me that's really been it i picked up burnout uh, remastered last night. I played about 20 minutes to 30 minutes of that, but not too much. I really hopped right back on to uh, Divinity, and then I was like, I, I, I just now realized I could actually do what he's doing in Dark Souls 3, and I'm going to do that. So, it's been that, super fun. That, that makes sense as to why I didn't see you on last night. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was I was definitely playing uh, Dark Souls 3 Randomizer for quite a while. But uh, what, what have you been playing good, sir? I will try and move through mine a little quicker. We end up spending more time on yours than I meant because I was pulling stuff in there too. But uh, Ratchet and Clank, uh, I got my Platinum in that. Played a little bit more Diablo, uh, and I have been playing Burnout the majority of the week. Started playing with uh, Blake. I, to be dead honest, I don't know how to say your last name. P O B S T, whatever it is. Um, Pops, maybe post po- post. Pops. Regardless of what it is, he helped me start off with getting uh, one of the online trophies, and we tried getting another one, which is it's interesting. So with with me playing Burnout, it, this is one of the examples of where the game being as old as it is and coming forward and there being so many other games, there's quality of life things that you just don't really think about that were missing. And one thing is that I never owned Paradise on PS3 because I couldn't afford it back then, but I did borrow it from a buddy like once or twice and got to play it very small amounts. Um, but now that I'm like really seeing myself in it, there's a lot of things that are like, I can't believe that this game didn't have this to begin with, but it just goes to show you how far games have come. I still think it's weird because I feel like the the titles before it had this but maybe it was a purposeful design decision. I think it's a stupid one. If so, um, once you start a race, if you go to it and do the wheel, you you don't know where you're going. You it, just you it, can't quit out, can you? It opens. You can't tell it that you don't want to do it. You can't quit it. If you screw up, this happened to me earlier. I've been doing the majority of the game really well, but I got a new car that was way faster, and it was a little looser in control than I was expecting, and I did a race with it. And I was going around a bend, and I accidentally flew off and didn't wreck until I flew off of a, of a ramp that took me down to this. It's like a rail line that goes throughout the whole game that is separate from everything. You can't get back off of it until you go to the beginning of it. It's really stupid. Um, but anyway, I, I flew down there. Then it wrecked me, so it respawned me down there. And for me to be able to get back and finish the race so I could continue on and do something else, I was just going to quit the race if I could. But you can't. Right. You have to finish the race before you can do anything else. And it's stupid. I can't stand it. Uh, the fact that there's no fast travel options at all, and a lot of the races take you to the same spot. So a lot of the races will take you to the countryside. The countryside doesn't have near as many races, and they'll take you to like the wind farm and the observatory, and they only have like one or two races around each one of them. And when you start trying to do all of the races that you do um, to get your license, it gets to be a point where it's like, now you're driving out here for no reason except for having to drive back. Now, of course, right. like a trophy to get to drive 750 miles, which I got um, through rubber band trick last night because I was like, just in case I didn't hit it naturally, um, I used a rubber band and then shoved my controller up against my monitor so that the R2 would stay pressed. And I went to the Wildcat Stadium and just started doing donuts. 
uh, well, not what? donuts, but a drift that was like a real circular pattern. Yeah. And I just left it like that overnight, and I came back and had the trophy. Um, Interesting. I did that in Final Fantasy 15 whenever I had to level up Gladios's uh, adventure or whatever skill it was by, yeah, the, to do like, by walking around. Walking. I just put a rubber band around Noctis and went to bed. <laughs> I mean, you know, I ran the analog stick for Noctis. Um, so that was that. Um, so I'm close to that, and it'll be a trifecta thing for me where I have three very quick in succession platinums. I will have Ratchet and Clanks. I will have Burnouts tonight, and unless I just cannot get that online trophy. I hope I can. I'm going to see if I can find people that are looking for other people to do it. I'm sure that there is that. And then the last thing is I should be able to knock out all of Diablo 3s before Sunday ends. So that'll be three games across four days, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, that's that's, um, that's- more than even, I've ever done. Even though Diablo was a long time coming. But um, I did play Monster Hunter last night a little bit. Hopped in for like an hour and did a little couple things. But, it, I mean, it's a game that you have to sink a lot of time into. And that's just the part that I'm at. And I don't know. I'm just I'm not necessarily excited about trying to fight Teostra right now. I've heard enough bad things about it. And I just don't. I've not been in the mood to deal with the stress that I know I'll inevitably feel with it. It's a, it's an easy fight, realistically. It's we'll just see. annoying to deal with. We'll see. Because the first time I fought the Steel Dragon dude or whatever his name is, Kishala. um, I whooped his ass. And Until then he you, went to his base and I died all three times there. And then every time, I fought, every time I fought him afterwards, he killed, He was messing me up way before then. So yep. it, Way too many whirlwinds. It's an interesting thing. but and so, you, haven't fought, you haven't fought... Um, Oh, Poisony Boy. I can't think of his name. Rotten Vale Boy? Yeah. Nope. Hadn't found him completely okay. yet. Still finishing on the tracks on that He one. could be annoying, too. But, Saul, so, let's move into Reader Mail real quick. The drop? Oh, yeah. There's a drop. Sorry. Well, yeah, we uh, skipped the drop last week. It threw we my... did. We, we skipped it for the past two weeks, actually. Uh, Why the week before? We did that one weirdly, didn't we? Didn't we record that episode on a li- day? Yeah, listener appreciation or something. Who knows? Or we, I think we just decided to skip it anyways, just because it's it's one of those things that I know not a lot of people like. But we have it in there just for the ones that do, um, and it's kind of interesting. But uh, so this is all games releasing the week of this Monday, the day this podcast comes out, and uh, we'll get started in here. We have Atari Flashbacks Classics Volume Three for PS4, Adelier Lighty and Swell, The Alchemist of and the Mysterious Paintings for PS4, available physically and digitally. We have Bit Dungeon Plus for PS4. The and art PS looks Vita. sweet. That does look sweet. Like I that actually may be a game I check out to see what it like. What's what it actually plays like. Art can be sadly, uh, you Dude, know. Just go to the, if you, you. I know you don't have any more. If you go to the Switches like eShop, some of the thumbnails look so sick, and then you get in there and it's like a puzzle game you'd find on phones. Yeah. It's ridiculous. That should be outlawed. Uh, Bridge Constructor Stunts for PS4. Code Realize. Uh, Bouquet of Rainbows. I'm almost trying to say Banquet of Rainbows. Bouquet of Rainbows for PS4, digitally and physically. Code Realize Future Blessings for PS Vita. Big one on the list that I'm picking up, day of release, and I think you are too. Far Cry 5 for I PS4, am. digitally That's part of why my retail. Platinum run is going the way it is. I just need to I, have it all clear from my system so yes. I can just play that. And on the occasional night that I want to take a break, I can play Monster Hunter, and that's where I, that's what I want to do. That's true. Uh, I, I've been trying to clear games out of it. That's why I'm just playing Dark Souls until then. Um, MLB The Show 18 for PS4. MX versus ATV all out for PS4. You can pick Jonathan, that up in the store or digitally. Jonathan was talking to me about that. He said it looks good, but I don't know. I, don't I know used either. to I used to really enjoy those games on PS2, but I just think that that was a, a time and place in my life kind of thing, and that PS2 had a lot of them, so it was like you naturally end up doing it. And I had to share games with my brother and my dad, and so I mean you end up kind of playing what's around you. But I enjoyed them at the time. They had good soundtracks for the time, but. They really fell apart in the PS3 era to me, but yeah, we, me and Seth had one for the GameCube that was really fun too. I think Not it may part have of that been, series, but oh yeah, well I think it may have been that maybe my taste just because as I started getting into way more story driven stuff, I was like, well I don't really want to waste time on that. I don't know. Yeah, because I still love racing games. I mean, obviously I'm pouring all my time into Burnout, and I enjoyed the hell out of uh, Need for Speed, uh, both of them actually, yeah. both of the recent ones. So who knows? Uh, we have Preda Vendetta Rising for PSVR, Reverie for PS Vita. Roller Coaster Tycoon Joyride for PS4, Tempest 4000 for PS4, The Witch and the Hundred Night 2 for PS4, available digitally and physically, and that, my friends, is the last one on the list. Quick little shout out to PS Plus Pals. Um, if you guys did not know, we have a Discord channel and uh, or server, and we have multiple channels. We have a podcast discussion. 
we have a Bloodborne spoiler discussion for those that have beaten it and um, who, who have just played through it. You got through it maybe just uh, for free and you want to talk about the story, come on to that one. But uh, we also have the PS Plus Pals and uh, every month we pick up one PS Plus game and we play that with everybody in our community and we chit chat about it there. So be sure to check it out if you enjoy Bloodborne and you want some chatting to go on yeah and one there. more little uh, addendum of that is we're still gonna have to try and we're still thinking of the best way to poll games because as somebody said uh bloodborne was the almost unanimous winner on the twitter poll uh but without the discord chat itself there was actually a lot of ratchet and clank talk uh and even though bloodborne won the chat has not necessarily been full of people playing bloodborne so it's trying to find i mean we'll ask again i mean it, I, we love that people wanted to to say hey bloodborne's great maybe they just wanted more people to play bloodborne and that's a way to do it uh but if you do not feel like you'll be able to participate then please refrain from voting i think we'll just do it on a straw poll next since that's just create a link go to the link click on it and then it's real easy um, we'll figure something out and, and we'll probably distribute the link through the discord chat that way even if it's maybe a lesser number of votes it's a vote that's more pure to what people want in yeah, the Discord. so that so. is going to be our way forward probably oh and we have a general channel too that's just off topic randomness that doesn't involve you know we don't have to talk about the podcast there to bloodborne whatever that's you know a lo- often all about music and other things uh just real fun to jump into so everybody be sure to check the link in the description for those uh, when you check out the timestamps and all kinds of other cool things down there, which I don't know if we're going to go into it now. Are we going to do news now? No, I want to go ahead and do it because um, sure, we'll before, have another link. before I hop into news. Um, another link that is brand new to our YouTube so channel. One of the things that we said when we started this show is that we weren't going to miss an episode that was going to be like, all these are promises we made to ourselves that we wanted to continue to make the show better. We wanted I, to listen to feedback and do what we could within the realm of what we do have the time and the ability to do I missed to one. make our show better. What would you miss? The, I was you know, overnight when Blaze had to fill Oh, sorry. But, I, yeah, I still, but, but the, it the, wasn't, the show as the a show whole... The show must have gone on. <laughs> yeah. The show as a whole has not missed one. Uh, but with that being said... Um, Twister. With us starting, we did not want to put the burden of any of the cost on anyone else until we could prove to ourselves and to y'all that this is what we are doing. This is what, I mean, we love to do this. This is my main extracurricular thing. I mean, I love doing it. I go out of my way to make sure I'm doing it. Saul constantly messes things up. I literally just, <laughs> I just tilted the controller to that, to there. That's perfect. Viewers who watch on YouTube, let us know. I if, you're, if you're on SoundCloud, I apologize that you're missing all the fun. Anyway, with that being said, uh, and with absolutely no requests, I mean, no, no, you know, specific need from y'all. If you feel like you would like to support us, we have actually decided that it's time for us to open a Patreon. Uh, the main point of this for us, is, the main thing that we are looking for, I mean, and we will continue to do it ourselves because we don't necessarily want the cost to come down on y'all unless y'all feel so inclined, um, is covering the cost of hosting the show on sound on you know podcast services so soundcloud on our rss feed uh sadly that is not free while youtube is uh, and we get more people and more hits on there um and so we definitely want to keep that going we've already paid to do it again for this year we will continue to pay for it however it works but if you feel like you enjoy the show and you want to support us you do now have an avenue to support us um it's nothing crazy. We are starting very small with Patreon. We want it to mainly be, a, hey, do you want to support us? Here's a couple of small things that we can do back for you. Uh, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time going into those. There's a chance that we will do a bonus episode explaining what those are and also asking for input of what you would like to see for those, uh, for those of you who are interested in doing so. But... As always, the show will continue to go on to be free to listen to and consume for all of you, so no worries there. Um, And we will do the rest of that as we find things out. But as a tie-in back to Discord, one of the small little things we can do is that uh, the the $1 tier, which is just supporting us, will have a reward that lets you change your... Uh, that'll change your Discord name color to red just as a little token of something cool to show You know that y'all are supporting us. And we definitely would appreciate it, but we have no need for it outside of that. If only you want to do it. Saul, would you like to add anything to that? Sure. Um, a lot of people probably may realize, may not, is that we don't have like, really any sponsors um, of any kind. Um, oh, we're not yeah. sponsored by any, any company at all. Um, so everything that we've bought, our lighting set, our camera, our mics, all that stuff is actually coming out of our pocket. And so that is one of the things that is kind of going to help us out that 
if you think that we're going to go eat Taco Bell with your uh, Patreon money, that's not what this is for. This is for upgrading equipment, upgrading um, anything else. You're going to go eat Taco Bell with <laughs> Patreon money? No, you're not. <laughs> I'm not. But Taco um, Bell's pretty good. I mean, it is good. But, mm. uh, but yeah, so like this is just to improve the quality of the show. There is no, this is, you're not paying for our vacation to Las Vegas. You're not, not doing anything like that. This is going into a PayPal that me and Brett both have control over and that we are going to use for, like I said, equipment, you know, um, anything that can contribute you subscriptions to podcast services. A lot of people don't know that's actually kind of expensive. It was what? One forty for SoundCloud that just renewed. Something like for that. Us. But regardless, I don't want to get too much into no, the no. Yeah, I was that, just, I, yeah, I was just, I was just giving my ending words and just kind of saying that it's, sure. it's, no, we're not running off with your money to go do fun things. And it's, I, it's just for the better of the show. And like Saul said, we don't have any, uh, we don't have anybody who is a sponsor as of yet. And I'm not going to say that that's not a route that we will possibly see. It just depends. As for as best and as long as we can within the realm of reason, keep this to continue going on completely ad free. And I do consider a sponsorship to still be an ad in the long run. Uh, I would like to do so. Uh, but Saul, moving on, I want to go ahead and hop into the news. You go do that, good sir. And I did not have the keep up, but now I do, so don't worry about it. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah. Interesting enough. Uh, Konami's Zone of the Enders, the second runner, Mars, which is a remaster of the PS2 sequel of the first Zone of the Enders game, now has a launch window. This was originally shown at PSX. This is one of their announcements they had there. Uh, no concrete date was given, but alongside a new trailer, it was revealed that the game plans to release in September this year. Uh, the remaster does uh, or will be 4K compatible on Pro and includes a new first-person VR mode for PSVR, but I don't quite know if it's going to be the entire game or just a small segment like they've done with like Gran Turismo. Um, but who knows? Uh, Monster Hunter World is the next up on the list. It has had its event schedule updated through April 12th. So check that out if you want to see uh, the events that are rolling through, if that's something that still interests you. Uh, the game also received its update for the Devil Ho, or however you say its name, Devil uh, Joe. along with its armor and weapons. A, so a funny new. thing about that is that everybody was complaining about how easy he was to hunt, and now nobody can beat Tempered Version. <laughs> it's like one-shotting people. It's, it's hilarious. That's funny. Uh, next up, last gens. This is not. Weird. This is not quite news. This actually happened in December. I didn't catch it, and I thought it was interesting, so I wanted to go ahead and bring it up. Uh, last gens cross media MMO Defiance, which, if you remember, uh, was a game based off of a show that played on Sci-Fi, uh, and it was like a tie-in, kind of like similar to the idea of what Microsoft did, uh, and also the um, oh god, I can't remember the name of the developer right now. Uh, Remedy did with or, uh, Quantum, Quantum Break. Break. Um, Jinx Pink's Poe joke, Yogi <laughs> Coke. After this. Um, anyway, the game is called Defiance, and they are going for another go around for next gen consoles. The game is being reimagined and reworked to take advantage of the new system's uh, power. It, ex uh, it aims to expand the Defiance universe and will carry the free to play structure that the original game eventually ended up adopting late in its um, you know tenure on the PS3 and 360. Uh, and the game will be called Defiance 2050, which to me signifies they're going to not only kind of revisit the, the stuff that they've already covered and break apart, and they've said that they've broken apart a lot of the mechanics to try and make the game more fun and more, you know, whittled down, and I imagine that they're going to completely distance themselves from the fact that there was ever a show around it and let this game just be a game, which is probably what they needed to do. Uh, anyway, a closed beta is scheduled for the weekend of April 20th through the 22nd, uh, if you're interested, signups are happening now. I actually think I may do it just because I never played the original. Such a weird, a weird thing to happen. I don't know if that thing still had a very active player base. I would imagine not, but I'm, I'm not. I can't be too. Yeah, because sure. they were stranded on 360 and PS3, which I mean, people were still on there, and it's free to play. So I mean, yeah, there's definitely a pool to market. Maybe people who were still on those systems are just playing it because it's something free. If to I remember correctly, the show didn't do good at all. I don't think so. The show got canceled very early. Right, and yeah. I, mean, I, to, I thought the game performed really poorly because of that, but to be honest, I didn't know numbers. Uh, but normally when you see games like that go free to play, at least back then it was kind of considered a weird thing. Now yeah. games moving, they go to show that if you do it right, you can stay alive. Like, you know, Elder Scrolls Online is one of them. Or like, um, or, or even though like I guess Fortnite. it's not free to play, but it's subscription free. So yeah, I was gonna say, well, like Fortnite, the next thing in news. Yeah, Fortnite Battle Royale. This is just on here because it's ridiculous. Uh, brought in 126 million in revenue through the month of May, March, February. Oh, okay, 
I guess I had you, April. Yeah, you said April, else. and I was like, My whoa. Uh, yeah. I don't know why I'm fixing it. So uh, $126 million in revenue through February. And it, 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 it is still following. It's 100% free-to-play thing. So there is no if, ands, or buts about where that money's coming from. It's not DLC looped in with it. That is 100% pure Russian microtransaction. Bots. That is insanity. Uh, and it beat out uh, PUBG. And, you know, there's been a lot of arguments going on about the fact that Fortnite is beating out PUBG because they're just getting things oh, it's, done quicker. Yeah, it's free to play, you know, and it's accessible to everybody. They're getting it. They're, they're adding maps quicker on top of the fact that they're free to play. Yeah. They're having, like, from what I've heard, people enjoy the microtransaction items that are available. It's so like, expensive, uh, more than what PUBG has to offer. So my point being is that it comes down to PUBG is getting beat at its own game, which is unfortunate, but... Well, it's 30 bucks on PC. And you have to have a high-end PC to run it, and then it's the same price on Xbox, and it runs like doo-doo butter. So it's like the only thing to do is to have Fortnite just be free, and that it is beating it for a good reason. Some reason you saying doo-doo butter makes me think of Big Seth. I don't know why. I think I might have stolen that from him. Maybe. Uh, next thing up, speaking of games that have moved to free-to-play or at least uh, non-subscription based, you know, buy it once, play it forever, uh, The Elder Scrolls Online, even though it's not a game for me necessarily, uh, has announced a new expansion, Somerset, uh, taking the game to the home of the Altmer for the first time since Arena. That's the very first game in the franchise. came out yep. in 94. It's been a long time. But the... Somerset Isles have been mentioned in every single game since then. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I mean, it's always, you know, that's hard to say anyway because every Elder Scrolls game constantly reinforces the idea that there's the rest of Tamriel around it anyway. Yeah, which is weird because... Well, I mean, like, it's a good thing, though. It gives you the, it gives you the feeling that, that you're while, you're, while you're limited to the area that you're in, there is more going on outside of you that you'll explore through different titles. I've it, always liked that. At it, least. It, no, it is cool. It's just weird in Elder Scrolls Online, especially going back to the the maps they've made of like Shaden Hall in Oblivion. It's like it's it's not exactly the same. Yeah, and then going to like certain areas of Morrowind, like Verdenfall, and yeah, I don't know. You know that game was fun when we played it. Like I didn't mind it. it you just, still have it? Yeah, it just didn't feel like. And you know, what? I thought I it was almost, fun. You're trying to steal everything you could. <laughs> I almost. I'm curious if the Morrowind expansion made it way better. I just don't know. Yeah, There was so much of the game that didn't feel right. It felt like, and I said this the other day to someone, and I don't necessarily mean it like I'll never play it again, but from launch, at launch, it was awful to me. When they when they kind of did their like a crap load of updates and soft reset everything to an extent, not quite to the extent that Final Fantasy did, uh, but still did it, I did come back into it. Me and Saul both went and picked it up used, and it was more fun, but it felt so close but also so far from what an Elder Scrolls game should feel like to me yeah. that it ended up feeling like a generic, like someone had just ripped off the style of the games, but and then and by ripping it off, they left the parts that I've always loved just out to see because they didn't feel like they needed it because they were trying to be quick. I don't because it's like on sure the surface when you watch somebody play it, you're like, that's almost Skyrim. Especially like the the compass bar and stuff and everything that looks and the, and the way that the, the way the first person actually looks in your hands it looks yeah. highly like Skyrim but then you start playing and you're like it just doesn't feel like Skyrim no I think that's the disconnect is the gameplay feel versus the look because I'll still yeah. never forget we were sitting there in one in some, in one imperial style city and like I'm just standing there and I forgot like I was doing inventory management or something and I come out and you just run past me and I'm like where's he going and then I look and I see a guard chasing me I'm like what have you stolen now. <laughs> Oh, that was super fun. Anyway, I mean, I'm not against going back to it. It's just, I don't know, man. I, if we do, it's going to take both of us just going screw it. Let's pick up. I think there's something going on, but I didn't want to put it on here because I didn't have time to research it further. I think I saw something yesterday that was saying if you pre-order this, you get instant access to the Morrowind thing. Maybe it's worth pre-ordering this just to get access to the Morrowind thing, but it depends on if it's a. Didn't well? Didn't we have the Morrowind thing? New. I thought we did. No, we did not buy the Morrowind expansion. We bought just the normal version which i have sitting over there interesting so anyway i'm not against trying it again with you if uh, if that's something you're interested in we've been talking about doing an mmo a lot lately and haven't done one yet i'm still interested in seeing what terra's like on console it looked good at psx but god hand or god eo3 got announced today too i did see that which but not, not that really interested to me but you know still uh fans of car combat racing though and this is still not that big to me because of on rush but that's just because i'm biased i love motorstorm uh but uh, games that are in the vein of Wipeout or Motorstorm, more so than Twisted Metal for car combat, are in store for another edition in the underused genre this gen. That's the best way I, I could think to word it because I do feel like there's a, a big lack of them. 
Uh, anyway, the game is called Grip, uh, featuring large-scale complex tracks and weapon-based combat to work your way to the front. The game looks to launch in 2018, though no further details were given on a window, like an actual time window for it. I think that looks cool. I'm not. I mean, I'm more excited for the more like lush nature style that Onrush is going for than this one. This one's like cold steel tracks that are windy and crazy, which is something Motorstorm had going for it. But it always had some form of nature in, like canyons in the first game, the like crazy jungle areas in the second game, and the city ruins that are around you. And the I don't know. It's 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 interesting. Um, saw your favorite thing in the world. Tekken Seven has received what? update one point twelve, finally adding Noctis, your favorite character ever, to the game through DLC purchase. Uh, I thought you'd enjoy that, but no, really, that's it's interesting. I do like to see that the fighting games like taking weird, like even Injustice when it was adding stuff like the Ninja Turtles and Hellboy. It's like that's such a weird, like we- weird, weird thing weird to crossover. do. But, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters Broly and Bardock DLC pack is coming very soon. Oh. Bandai Namco have confirmed that March 28th as the release date, uh, as well as announced a free update for the game coming this spring that involves the Z unions in the game and a competition revolving around them. Uh, not really sure. I didn't mess with the Z unions in the time I've spent with the game, so I really don't know what that is. Uh, and the last thing I have on here is Sony's XDev mentioned in a recent tweet that Wipeout Omega uh, it's PSVR update, which was also one of the announcements at PSX, uh, is, quote, great, and you'll see for yourself shortly, and this was in response to someone asking about where it stood since they've kind of been a little radio silent on it, which makes sense. I mean, it's a free update, not that big of a deal, and VR is still more of a niche market, but it's doing well for itself. So I think a game like Wipeout makes a lot of sense anyway So for, for VR. Uh, Saul, now we didn't do reader mail, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't die. Woo, boy. <laughs> All righty. Let's see. Twitter got rid of my... Uh, yeah, same. Put my tweeted thing about Reader Mail. But we have a couple questions to answer. For all that don't know, you can follow us on Triangle SQRD over there on the Twitter website. And uh, once a week, typically on Friday, but sometimes on Saturday morning, we'll uh, throw out a tweet get, letting you know to send us some Reader Mail. If not, send us a message on Twitter. That also works. Or... Uh, at uh, triangle squared at gmail.com and uh, or triangle squared podcast at gmail.com, isn't it? Yep, yeah, okay, spell that exactly. Like and it's always in the link, so uh, check that out too. But um, we always pick three questions, and then any other questions that get asked, they don't get thrown away, they get put into a little container for a readable episode that can happen every once in a while. We have Loki, one of our uh, one of our boys in Discord. He actually said, Hey, hey hold up, Loki Finrer. We have to say this. Oh, wait, yeah, I forgot RJ Loki. Because RJ Loki is very similar in name. I don't think I've ever said RJ Loki's just name as Loki, but okay, Loki Fenrir. Sorry for confusion. Triangle Square is given a community award by Sony for being a great PS podcast. As a token in our of dreams. Pre- yeah, in our dreams. <laughs> as a token of appreciation, they decided to give each of you an authentic replica of one of your platinum trophies. Which of which of your platinums will you select and why? We I love know, this question. We, we all know my answer. I've already said it, and now I know yours, and I'm going to take a stab at it and see if I get it. It's going to be Bloodmourne. No, it's going to be my name is Mayo, dude. Yes. Why not? Right? I know, like that would be hilarious. I might get the that. Hannah, would actually be funny. I would get the Hannah, Hannah Montana Platinum and then get that one. What a wasted opportunity. <laughs> oh, it would. I would definitely get Bloodborne. Bloodborne is my favorite Platinum that I have. I figured you would. Uh, you know, this is one of those ones that ever since he, ever since I saw it pop on my phone. I've been really trying to think of what I really would want to put on my shelf as my number one platinum, right? The thing that I'm most proud of that I've done platinum wise. And I've basically come to the conclusion that, and it shouldn't be surprising to you, Saul, and you probably won't be. Take a stab. You want to guess? The order. No. As much as I love that game. I mean, I love that game, but no. I'm not proud of that. Shadow of the Colossus. No. Good good choice, though. I'll give you one more, and then I'm just going to answer the it, last of us no you don't got to try nope. for that or platinum for that nope no no nope, nope. okay go ahead i i, I use up all my guesses terraria it is a game oh. that took me like four to five years to platinum I across multiple consoles i played it on ps3 vita and ps4 and it took me so long because i kept playing with new people to show them the game and how much i loved it and then i would restart to make sure that they got the full experience and every time I do so i would set myself further back from getting the platinum that i probably could have just done by grinding through on my own account but I finally did it, saw, and I'm proud of it. And that's my game. I love that game. I think that Terraria is probably 
the indie game of the last 10 years to me as wild as that sounds there's been a lot of really good indie games and that i know that's a really strong saying but for me personally it is probably my most enjoyed indie game um for more reasons than like you know there's plenty like journey which has a great emotional pull there's games like hellblade which is indie that i loved i mean like i called it the other day basically the perfect game for me it was everything i wanted it to be and more and i mean there was nothing in that game that happened and i was like well i would have done that differently or i'd rather the game do this it was exactly what i needed it to be so um that, while those exist terraria has got like over i mean literally probably over a thousand hours of my time which doesn't seem like a lot to some people when it's a single player game and not or i say single player but it's not multiplayer competitive based so for a game to be that much time in it i mean it's impressive i think and for uh me. if if you uh if you guys have terraria they added moon lord we still need people to play that with the beat moon lord yeah because i'm not done that and i wouldn't you mind better you better hop on hop on and play it with us because we still have it uh, Steve Bitto said, what city or region has been underutilized in games and what type of game would you like to see take place there? I, I, I'm, I like this question specifically because the South. I and like the question. Far Cry 5. Which is Montana, days. which is more central than well, anything. Yeah. But it has decidedly Southern vibes to oh, it. Of course. I agree. I knew you were going to say that. Has, yeah. I, I, it's I got see, Bible Belt pulled to it. I like know? that. Yeah. And I, I love like religious occult stuff in games and you know coming we're from the south i don't know if you guys can tell we have an accent of any kind be interesting but um i'm sure we do but it's weird because i'm always fascinated by movies or any media books or movies or video games that take place in the deep south uh because what didn't resident evil 7 take place in louisiana yes yeah so it's like it would be balling to see another game did you play a game from south did you play infamous 2 no, but I remember watching you play it. It looked murky. It so takes, it had to take it place, takes in place in New Marai, which is based off of New Orleans. Oh, yeah, I could kind of uh, get that. And it has a decidedly southern antagonist. I mean, it's great. It is great. I love it. I and, like dark southern stuff, though. Yeah, no, this is actually like really screwed up, and it plays on a lot of stuff that you'd expect a New Orleans thing to do. You would love Infamous 2. I just know it. I, I just, know it. They need to make a remake. I feel it in my heart. Uh, but yeah, South. What about you, Brett? Okay, so the and South horror. is South not, and horror. That's a good region. Well. That's a good region. I'll, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's hard to pick city because you actually try and think about it, and a lot of the cities that are probably the more interesting cities in the world have been done. I mean, you think Dallas? about the Assassin's Creed games start to do things like... A lot of the cooler cities that are overseas have been done. London is great, uh, but London's actually been extremely utilized, and I'd say for the most part, well. Uh, and we're going to see it continue to be utilized with games like Vampire coming up from uh, Don't Nod, the people who did Life is Strange and um, Remember Me back on PS3. Uh, that game looks cool to me. I mean, I at least want to try it, even if it's just to support the developer, because even though a lot of people didn't like Remember Me, I love that game. I thought it was really cool. I mean, not perfect, but hey, what game is? Life is Strange, also great. So seeing them try different things like that is cool to me. Um, Region-wise, I and you see games tinker with it, right? But you start thinking about this. This is more of like an open world thing or at least a tight narrative driven thing. Because like you can say that The Last of Us did some stuff in like Texas. It was a part in Austin and stuff like yeah. that. If I'm not mistaken, it was Austin. Um, but those are small segments. You're not really spending time in a world of Texas or anything like that. Like you're not spending time in that. I would never say, like, you know, I, I imagine some people would probably say their hometown, but there's no way in hell I'd want to play my hometown. No, hey, our, our cool hometown to- is boring because it's too spread out because we live in the South. That's the problem with the South. The game has to support wildlife gameplay, which Far Cry does, which it, is it good. It would be cool to see like a or horror in Texas. But how? What do you mean how? Dallas and no, Austin? No, no, no. Kinda, well, yeah, kind of. Because you, you have those southern little areas. Like every yeah. good thought needs like the, the little swampy area that... It's kind of out on the beaten path. And then the big city metro, then the suburbs, all that good stuff. I, mean, I guess, yeah. I mean... They used to not do that in the old in the older Grand Theft Yeah, Grand pretty Grand much always San Andreas. And it's pretty much ever since I quit playing those games, I've not had to deal with that. So I know that Five has that, but I've not experienced five it hasn't, myself. Five San Andreas has it. I don't know. San about Andreas four. had it on like a super small scale, so I don't know. No, they had the the, the whole Bigfoot thing in the woods. Yeah, and all that but it wasn't stuff. like a real forest. It was just like a California. It looked like when you go to uh, the hills of LA and you can see the Hollywood sign and then you go behind it and there's that's basically what it was a little well, bit of a forest yeah, behind it there's a mountain there though um, it's not in Hollywood yeah uh, I don't have a specific city I think the south is a good option but there's already been a lot of games that I've loved and I know that some people while I didn't play it really liked Mafia 3 which also took place in New I Orleans actually, yeah I just started playing that game um, not too long ago on Steam 
Oh, like two days ago. Okay. Yeah, it's free on Humble Bundle. It's Humble hard Bumble. to say. I think that so many places have been utilized. I like the idea of cold, like somewhere cold, and like really, really trying to find an interesting way to utilize ice and stuff in, into mechanics. But how do you do that and keep it fresh? I don't quite know. But I, I like the idea of things being different. Historical places are always cool because it's definitely alternate history. And I think that's one of the things that's weird for me. I prefer to see alternate history and let them change things that we already know. So it starts to be a little weird. But good question nonetheless. Uh, Saul, I'm going to let you choose the last one. Well, we haven't answered a boy uh, question from our boy Liam in a while, so I'm going to go with him. And he says, what's a game that you are confident that you can beat the other guy at? Example, I know I could beat my brother at Mario Kart. Brett, what's a game that you are confident you can beat someone else in? See, now I'm, I'm taking his question as... I'm a player versus player. Me and you. Okay. That's the way I'm going to twist it, regardless of if he meant that way. Saul, what game... Do you, and I know the answer for myself because there's I, I don't play it enough, so I don't necessarily know if it's a fair choice. But in terms of games that we actually play a decent amount of, you'd murder me in Halo. I was um, going to say Halo 3. Like I can, You would probably murder me. I'm going to say like one game gets harder for Saul, but Saul would probably murder me in any first-person shooter game. Saul plays way more first-person shooters than I do. I play probably more third-person shooters than he does, I would say. I'll uh, never forget the the self proclaimed best Halo player in our town, and I don't mean in like our friends group. I mean in our town. P- a lot of people who played Halo knew of this guy. Challenged me on Halo Three, and I beat him. And then he threatened to kill me. <laughs> who was it? I'm not gonna say his name <laughs> because of how I'll say that his 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 gamer tag was no because he goes by his no, gamer tag. Don't, don't, He's don't one of those guys it. that goes by his gamer tag in real life. Yeah, it's not. Oh God. Yeah, and his name his, his name started with an F. I'll tell you after. Okay. Joe would definitely know. Joe is there. That's interesting. Uh, Saul, the game I think I could beat you at. Uh, this is, You didn't play enough of it. That's where this starts to get crazy. I know I could beat you at most kart racers. I just feel it in my blood, but I love kart racers. I don't know about that. Now, Ma- Mario Kart, I hate Mario Kart. No, so I I'm still not gonna play don't it. know about that. <laughs> Maybe you could, you definitely beat any sim racer. Oh yeah, I'd probably be in sim racers, but yeah, see, no. but see, that's the question's great. Arca- arcade is a toss up because I'm pretty good at arcade racers, or so I feel that I am. Yeah, probably. Who knows? But kart racers, man, I love them. I play them. I steep myself in them. I've actually been having a, a huge. Oh my god, I've been having a huge lacking of kart racer in my life lately, and I've, I'm gonna find one to play. Just to, I'm hoping that there is that new uh, star, the Sonic uh, racing game that they were talking about doing, the Sonic Kart Racer. Uh, but Saul. You gonna say Halo for me? I'll say Halo because I, I just so we're gonna do games that we just don't necessarily the other person don't play. Back in my of. heyday, I am going to say I'm gonna say Gran Turismo then because okay. I know I can. Yeah, beat I can't. I can't. I, I suck at those games. I don't know that I can beat Ryan. I would do well against Ryan at the beginning when we were playing together, and then he would just overtake me at the end because I'd get too cocky whenever he'd actually pass me. I'd start trying to pass him too aggressively and lose out. All right. Well, good. Thank you for your uh, questions valued listeners that sounds weird <laughs> sound like a robot valued listeners valued employee you are going to be terminated Saul getting some video game high school vibes oh man bot meets boy <laughs> <laughs> best show ever it if is. you have not watched video game high school and you it's still on to. Netflix is I don't it? know if it is I hope it is. If you've not I'm watched sure watch it, it find a way. It's funny. Yeah, I'm almost positive the entire series is on YouTube. For they free. pretty much have sections that any type of game... Like, you'll appreciate it as a gamer in general, but there'll be like specific genres that you'll really think are just funny the way they're handling. Uh, very good show. Very good show. Yeah, indeed. it's all on YouTube. It's all uploaded by Rocket Jump, too, who made the series, who's also Eddie Wong. Who, or Freddie Wong. Eddie Wong. <laughs> Eddie Wong. It's Freddie Wong. It's uh, the, the really cool special effects guy on YouTube who does a lot of things. All right, Saul. So, Time to move into our main topic, and do you want to know what that is? I do. Do I do? I do. (laughs) So, this actually comes from just uh, uh, somebody put it up, and it's actually Nick, one of the guys that we met at PSX. Really fun. Had time with uh, with him and his buddy. I can't remember his name's his bud's name for the life of me right now. I keep having problems remembering his name, but luckily I remember Nick. Um, Anyway, he is in our Discord, and he posted something that. My initial response was so strong to because 
I mean, and I think that my initial response is right. You know, my gut feeling is right on this. But I kind of wanted to go with you and see, because you didn't really chime in on this one in particular. What is your feelings towards this? And what that is, his statement was, he was talking with a coworker, and he, they thought of something interesting. How about instead of a PS5, Sony makes a PlayStation PC with some proprietary software that lets you play games on it. It would also be modular, allowing users to upgrade parts either with Sony's official product or compatible third-party uh, hardware. Also, they could sell the software OS to people with gaming rigs already built at a lower cost, probably with a controller and other peripherals. They could even bundle in a keyboard and mouse monitor setup for those who want it all. What do you guys think? Uh, I know, we'll get it all the way right now. This is impossible. Like This is something yes. with, with between the different operating systems and all that stuff and the each generation's architecture being slightly different, it's impossible okay, to do. So not necessarily, because while it's not an OS, Steam acts as almost an OS that lays over your windows if you use well, it the right way. Well, there is a way. Steam OS. Oh, I know. And, yeah. and But that's also, I mean, you're dealing with something totally different when you're doing that. Well, yeah. Uh, but Steam, I just didn't know if you were aware. Yeah. Um, but when you're doing that, you think about this, they could have it to be where it's not necessarily an OS, but it's, a, it's a basically a Steam-like thing. I get where it's going with it. And... My initial response, I'll go ahead and get that out of the way for people who aren't on Discord, is that on paper, this idea sounds awesome, right? This sounds like, oh man, uh, they, won't be have to, they won't have to continue making consoles. They can, we can continue to modularly upgrade this so that it moves to the things. More people are getting to play the games. They're going to make more money. That's your like Some people are, at least some people. I know some people know better for the industry, but some people will think that, oh, they'll have more money. That's not necessarily true because why I lean so against this when I initially said it is that as a business decision and as a business for Sony, it doesn't make sense for them in the grand scheme because the idea of them being the top dog with the PlayStation 4 and presumably wanting to continue that trend with the PS5, and hopefully they do, but who knows? They also could just flounder like they did with the PS3. They get too big-headed. They screw up. Um, it can happen. It could also go really smoothly for them, or it could be more than likely, if nothing else, just middling like Xbox is doing now. But Xbox only looks like they're doing so bad, and they are doing worse than PlayStation, but they look they look like they're doing bad because of how bad PlayStation is eclipsing them. So with that being said, what Sony will attempt to do from a business perspective, and this is for people, some people don't know the cycle, uh, but some people do. The idea behind it, uh, is that whenever you have a console, you sell the console. For the first time in history this gen, at least traditionally with home consoles, Sony and Microsoft both sold their consoles at a profit, whereas throughout last gen, Sony with the PS3 was infamously known for selling the PS3 at hundreds of dollars or at least $100. Pricing speculated that it was somewhere up in near $800, $900 to produce a PS3, but they were selling them at $600. Uh, because of all the advanced technology in them, and they were wanting to make the money up on the tail. The way they make the money up on the tail, definitely since they weren't charging for online services at the time, because online services weren't even considered at the beginning of PS3. That was something that rolled in a little bit later. I mean, they right. had internet built in, but online services from them weren't, weren't an initial weren't thought. launch. Um, but with that being said, the way that they make money back is because when you look at this, Sony gets a machine out. They put the machine in your hand. If they get lucky and you and the majority of people buy their machine, which also means that the majority of people buy the majority of games on their machine, every game that's sold, money goes back to PlayStation. And some people wouldn't think that this is a thing, but this happens across all consoles. When you buy on Nintendo, Nintendo gets a cut of that money, even if it's a third party release. Microsoft, they get a cut of the third they get a cut of the money regardless of the whether they publish it or if it's a third party release. And that comes down to the fact that basically it's because they're licensing the games out to play on their consoles and they are charging a fee for them to be able to sell the game on their console because while game makers can make games all day long, they don't have anybody to sell them to if they can't get them on the PlayStation or the Xbox and the Nintendo. If those didn't exist, there'd be less of a market for them to do so. Definitely within the casual you know, player base. So the idea yeah. is that Sony provides a console that people play so a place to play the game that they're developing, they they charge a fee for the games to be put on their console, and then every time you buy one, they're, I mean, they're making money. Every game that comes out with them, they get a cut of every game sale. The way that that's supposed to play out and work is that when you get the majority of a console, 
you are making the majority of the money. You are making more money hand over fist if you get the majority of consoles out there. So market share is really important in this reason. And it's a big reason why the Xbox was doing so well. And it starts to... It, it, it's a cycle. It continues to build on itself because Sony does really well at the beginning, right? They get exclusives and features and they just say the right things. Comes out, the console does really well. They get a lot of consoles out there. Games start coming out and sell the majority on PS4. People start deciding to get their marketing rights specifically with PlayStation or PlayStation pays them, whichever one it comes down to. A lot of the time, PlayStation doesn't have to strong arm for any reason because they have the market share to pull. Why would you not right. want to, without Microsoft paying you a ton of money, why would you want to go out of your way to market Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the Xbox when it's going to obviously sell more on the PS4 throughout this gen? So when you do that, it just starts to continue a thing. And then the way the casual market goes, you get the marketing deal for that. People who don't steep themselves in gaming culture will think when they see Red Dead Redemption 2, which may be the one game they really want, they'll think it's PlayStation exclusive because at the end of the commercial or at the beginning of the commercial, they see a PlayStation logo. Yep. And people don't think it's that simple, but it is. People start to go, well, why is that game? Like When I worked at GameStop, People are like, man, I can't believe the new Call of Duty is Xbox exclusive because all of the marketing deals with their Xbox. It's yeah. like, no, they're not Xbox exclusive. They're just Xbox has the market share required and the money required to get this out there. So that cycle is important, and that cycle is what keeps Sony in business and what keeps Sony being able to get income and I mean, and get capital to continue to invest and grow that cycle. That's the idea. You have a base cycle and you continue to grow it. You continue to get more third parties dealing up with you. You continue to make more first party games that want to pull people to your console so that you can feed this machine. And everything that is mentioned in this, no matter how cool it sounds, I mean, and it really, I mean, it, in an ideal world, it sounds great. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Now that's just on the business side. So, I mean, Saul, what are your thoughts on the business side of it? I mean, do you, do you agree with what I'm saying? Or do you feel be, like there is an argument to be made that they could still turn this into a viable business it'll, opportunity? Because obviously Steam makes money. That's, oh, there's no, you know, because yeah. Steam is the point of, the, the, the the point point of sale. sale. For, uh, I'd say 85% of PC sales. And, and, there is Origin and then there is Battle.net. Yeah, and, Actually, well, Battle.net is probably, I'd say, a lot, a pr pr pretty big compared to all the other ones yeah. uh, that's not Steam. But, you know, I think that it's definitely going to bring some people over who are, you know, maybe PC gamers who have console friends who they'll, they'll say, oh, well, now I can plug in my PC, my keyboard and mouse and play Battlefield with them instead. Yeah, I could do that instead of, you know, playing it by myself on Steam if it comes down to that. Or say the people who finally realize that there is a graphics card um, attachment that you could buy or a brand new graphics card that you could pop in and get a guaranteed 60 frames that's an extra 200 bucks, then sure, yeah, like that'll work pretty fine. Um, see, but, and, and that's, what's funny. So we're, we're still talking about the same thing. It's that the people who Sony relies on the most, the core gaming market is not them. It's yeah. the casuals. Yeah. It's, and well, I don't talk about the casuals. I'm talking about the, oh, I know that, but I'm saying the core okay. gaming market, Sony relies on to get the system going, right? The casuals are who they rely on to make the money, make the system money hand over fist as time continues to go. Right. Because the games that the, the few games that will undeniably pull the casuals, are going to be what makes in the majority of the money. They want Grand Theft Auto Five to sell 80 million copies on PS4. Why would they not? Because they're going to make that money. So they don't care. It's a, and, and the majority of people who play Grand Theft Auto Five are casual gamers. I mean, that's there is no way that the majority of 112 million or whatever the hell that game's at are all hardcore gamers. There's not. I mean, it's just. It's unrealistic to think that the core gaming market, while maybe bigger than ever, hardcore gamers are bigger and more socially acceptable, and the industry continues to grow and they the interest behind it grows. Sure, but casuals are important, and the people who like, I still have conversations. A lot of people will go, "Oh yeah, I got an Xbox One, but I just play Call of Duty every year, or I just play Grand Theft Auto and or Madden." Those are important. They they help get the consoles out there, and then that will also start to help getting people to bleed over into core gaming. Like I tell you, about one of my coworkers. Started, oh, he you know he would play just sports games, and now he's played The Witcher, Final Fantasy. He's played games that are bigger, sure, but it started to branch him into games that normally, you know, that, that's the point of you know these games get so big they become part of the casual market. But then that starts to pull you towards him playing like he's thinking about playing Nier Automata. Yeah. So and that's not a casual game by any standard. That is a game that's really more aimed at people who are going to be part of the core market. It's a very niche genre. So. Yeah, it's. I get what you're saying too, and there it's is something over that. Though. But the core gamers are just a small percentage, and you're only going to be able to pull the people who are core gamers. Who go, okay, well now this is cool. It's it's a it's a 
you know, it's a weird argument to go over, but uh, anything else you want to add? Sorry. No, you're fine. Yeah, it's just, it's those, it's that, you know, the percentage of people that don't want to buy it because they have a PC that does better. And then they, the, the same people who have that mindset or have that, that better PC also may have friends on PS4 that is like, okay, well now if I can get this thing to run just as good as my PC and my friends play this game, you know, it may not have Divinity 2, but it has Battlefield or the kit them. he was talking about where you can pl- where you you, you have it, you put a kit, kit yeah. into a existing console. I doubt any uh, established PC gamer would want to buy that kit though, because I guarantee you that if they're established, they have a better PC, mouse, well, monitor, all that. Well, stuff no, no, not that. He was talking about the if for people like in this, he specifically says they could sell software OS to people with gaming rigs already You're built not, and, and that's at a lower gonna, cost. That's not going to be something either. Like no, nobody, uh, no, no. Like I said, no established PC gamer is going to deviate away from Windows. There's no reason to. Like that that's the thing is that they're already established in a PC and this is who they would be trying to appeal to. They're not you're not going to get them away from what they already know and, I, and I, I, not love because nobody really loves Windows See, but 10. he mentioned software. So I do specifically say like if it's if it it's feels place, like a PlayStation store that's like Steam. That's what like I'm Steam, getting at. But, but and when you launch it through same, you launch it through this PlayStation store and the PlayStation store thing's got an overlay that's decidedly PlayStation for when you're playing with PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not an OS, but it is something that's it sits on top of your OS, almost, right. almost like a temporary scan while you have it open. Right, but then at that point, you're like, what? What? What is it sitting on top of? Because you're playing it on PS4. No, you're playing it on Windows. But see, you would be. It, it doesn't make sense though, because w- it sounds like you're kind of thinking about what he's saying as like a cross between, but which no. I guess would be possible uh, between PS4. He's saying that the new console is just a PlayStation PC, and forever on, it'll be a modular thing you continue going on, and you play with each other. And I mean, maybe you can play well, with PS4 people, but that's why he's talking about you. You they I, sell the PlayStation PC for people who don't want to build their own console because they don't know how to. I mean, they don't PC because they don't know how to. But then for people who have established gaming rigs, they can buy this little thing, which is buying's weird. See, maybe if they have a kit with a controller, if you wanted to get the specific PlayStation controller they've made for this, but you can't make the or uh, because of the 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 consumers that that buy on PC making the storefront and the play front like Steam is you don't pay for Steam no it's free Steam makes money on the back end uh huh you'd hit Sony would have to adopt a, uh, if they went this route. They would have to adopt a similar method. Well, not, well, not only this is that the the problem is is not necessarily the, <coughs> the wording, but it's also nobody's gonna buy a PC that is a PlayStation PC like. All it would be would be PlayStation branded and well, uh, see that what I'm still modular and still updatable. He's wanting to do this. That's what I thought because instead of a PS5, yeah, 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 this would fail. Yeah, guaranteed. I Um, and see, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, Do you want to kind of wrap your business end up here? Yeah, I'll wrap my business end up, and I'll just say that um, it. What I am in my mind, I'm not going with a PC version. I'm just going with a modular PS5. That can accommodate different types of gamers. Okay, so you're upgrade. you're flipping the script on what could be at least a somewhat a version of this, but still pulling it decidedly more towards a console and how you think that may. So we basically yeah. agree that the model that he's actually proposed, while it sounds it's great a on paper, really cool. Yeah, it's a really cool. It idea. just won't it's succeed. Just like it, at the end on, of the day, from a business side, it won't succeed. Yeah, and I mean, and then on a gaming side, at the end of the day, it and I really don't understand like. The mindset of people who would want to buy this, because I'm not, I'm not like, I don't mean to be sound like offensive or anything, solitary red. Like we've talked before in Discord, and I'm not getting like I'm not insulting you or anything. But um, and this is something I've thought of, and I've mentioned to you before. It'd be cool to have a modular PS4, and I could upgrade to. But a lot of people at the same time that there's like a there's a big misconception about building a PC when it. So are we moving away from business now? Because this is what I I want to get into. Okay, go go ahead. Uh yeah, so it's there's a big misconception about PC, and it's it's really a big adult Lego set. Like it took me 45 minutes to build my PC, and it, it's you know you throw your motherboard in, you screw it in, and then everything pops into the motherboard. It's that easy. Um, you're not soldering anymore. You're not doing any of that wild crazy thing. Um, and inevitably, that's what the PS5 modular would be, or modular would be. You're you're still gonna have to open it up, pop out the graphics card, and pop it a brand new one. I don't think there's any possible way to have it an external uh, upgrade or attachment. There is a couple of laptop upgrades that you could buy that you can uh, connect through your laptop and actually make it stronger. Like yeah, there is I've a, seen them too. Is it a is it a Nvidia one or is it, it's it's a brand maybe Asus? 
I can't remember, but you but plug in a graphics card into it's it. It's like almost like an external graphics system. Yeah. And, you know, something like that would be cool, but it'd have to be a, a decentable size to keep in your home entertainment system. It'd have to, you know, be able to stay cool around that. Something like that is definitely cool. It's just, I think that the main reason to do this is to entice the people who want a higher performing machine in which if this is the PS5, it should already be higher performing than the PS4 Pro. Uh, but if you, what I, what I like about the idea is the custom the customizability is that you could talk to people about, you know, oh yeah, mine has this graphics chip from NVIDIA and oh yeah, mine has the one from AMD. It, it, it plays this game like this. It's at that point almost a PC, if it's <laughs> but it's mo- a PlayStation. The only thing I would say about that is if it's modular, it will not be from two different manufacturers. Sony will Sony will get with one manufacturer who has a chipset well, that's yeah, that consistent or whatever yeah. and we'll go through that. Now you could say I've got the, it won't be quite like a PC, but you can be like, oh, I've got the, the Pro Plus graphics system that you plug yeah. in. It, it won't be like the 1066 gigabyte. Like you don't have to remember all that. Yeah, stuff. no, it'll, it'll just be, be like, it'll be thought out names. I mean, this is all hypotheticals of this is what happened. Oh yeah, and we can still be wrong, but I get where you're going. It's like the idea World of being able to kind of say that he's going to have a, a, a ball with it and do so. I mean, this isn't this talk is, about yeah, what's well, actually going to work. This is this, talking about our, weird like, ways, almost like a dream world. But see, it, it's town. funny that you say that because you say it's like you like the idea of the customizability. But here's the biggest thing. You are somebody who already is in to the idea of the PC market. So doing that on a PC side, I mean, on a console side, sounds great, right? A little redundant than anything. It, true, because now you're taking away the point of a console. The point of a yeah. console is to be easy. So Plug and play. Similar which- to what you're talking about, this is where I was saying the other day, too. One of the other barriers is that... Or one of the other reasons I don't think it's a very you know viable platform to move on to is that with the casual market being so important and even some of the core gamer market because I mean, so there's a lot of people that are core gamers that still don't play on PC or nor do they entertain the idea of PC um, who still as you start to get close to this and you announce it how do you market it to where it's going to be if they know that there's this upgradeability to it it automatically starts to make the machine seem too complicated and too complex and not plug and play nature. Yeah, and and now my system will be inferior too quickly, way more quickly than even when the pro came out because now there's multiple ways to improve it. And all that's maybe huge. I don't, maybe I don't feel like I know how to do it well enough to make it easy to do. Even if they try and market easy, it's just, it starts to pull away. What, I, what I'm basically going to say is let's just say PS4 does goes this route. PS5 goes this route, right? They become this modular machine. Then Xbox by contrast, were to come out and say, hey, we had just a really powerful console that we had just one console of. It's plug and play, quick and easy to do. It's 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 what you've loved forever, but it's still continuing to evolve to what, you know, as times change. But it is a console experience. I am, um, am of the mindset that the Xbox would perform better because of its more it's clear simple. marketing. And there's too many misconceptions, too. Like, people think that a PC is inferior every two years. That's just not the case. Brett's PC... Uh, is like three years old. Three years old can play 4K games at 30 frames per second. It's like it, it, his his PC is stronger than his PS4 at this point. It's just like it's three years old. Like my PC is gonna last me well longer than three years at 1080p. And that's just the thing is like it's it's a huge misconception of oh well this new thing's out mine's inferior. No, like there's no such thing as inferiority in PC unless it just doesn't run. Unless it doesn't run at what you want. There's inferiority, but getting lost in it's just pointless because there's so many configurations. And when you start to do it on console, yes, the idea of modularity that's controlled through one, you know, Sony would be the controlling factor of what comes in. They would be the ones responsible for for marketing it in a way that is palatable or, you know, whatever, palatable for people. Palatable. Um, and what? when you start to do that, what? I say, like, wouldn't it suck if the PS5 came out like this and then people just bought it for cryptocurrency? And then, <laughs> oh and then my the price, god! The, the PS5 and was a thousand price dollars. Gouging. Yeah, regardless, graphics card go down, which is great, and then that's a good time to get into PC gaming. <laughs> but my point being is that the clear marketing is, and, and I say that with even with the Pro out on, on right now, because the the Pro has its own clear marketing and the PS4 has its own clear marketing. That and it's it's just to see if they start to introduce and like someone else said this and it was I think it was World End actually said he wouldn't mind like the idea of a Pro Two before PS Five or something like that. I may be wrong if I'm misquoting. I'm, I'm dead sorry. Um, but no, I do not want to see that because in my opinion, you start to get away from again. Now you have three different markets on this console and they're all. Where does the marketing between the Pro and the new Pro go? Or do they 
abolish the old pro or does the pro become the de facto PS4? These are way too many things to I deal with. I do think with. it'd be cool if, if, if on launch a PS5, it, it, uh, PS5 Pro will launch with it. Only reason I don't is because you would be, pray, be play, paying a ridiculous amount up front, whereas if you waited three to four years to release the Pro, you make a much stronger machine, but at a launch cost, but at a cost that launches so similar to what well, the original how, one came how, out. How crazy would it be if the PS5... Someone else has mentioned that, though. I mean, I don't think it's a terrible idea, like, but I think for cost reasons, it wouldn't work. I mean, it could... It, it and it splits could. your user base to it. Not realistically, because in this but, day and age, in this, current, in this current age right now, even in two years, there's not much that consoles can do that is going to be revolutionary. Like you're not going to get 4k and 60 frames in two years at all and be affordable. So oh, I don't know about that because no, that's a lot you. of that comes down to die sizes and how, what they can get on a chip that fits in and how easily they can cool it because, and, and how cheaply they can get it into a box. That's just the thing that was like, now or, don't be wrong. That's not the end that I'm good at. I mean, I don't pay t- I, I I understand specs for the most part. And I keep up with them, and I understand why the PS4 was a better console at launch than the three than the Xbox One was. Um, there's some things the Xbox One had, like a slightly higher clock count. These are things that, yeah, I, I understand. I, I get what's going on. I understand how to build a PC. I've done it, but still, it starts to muddy it too much for me. And that's going to be my my end of the argument here. No, not even argument. My end of of this hypothetical. Yeah, and why I stand on, on the opposing side of this hypothetical. Yeah, well, I think we both are. Yeah, is that. As a person who works all day and then comes home to a family of wife and kid and still tries to play as much games as I possibly can, I do not want to have to think about all of this extra crap often enough for it to start to deter and take away from me playing the games. I just like the idea. I bought the Pro because the Pro was a very obvious, hey, this is more powerful if you want to do it, which I was like, okay, I have the disposable income too. I wouldn't mind doing it, and I would, I'm already wanting a new TV for this game room I'm building anyway. I will need a separate TV. Let me go all in and get it all. The one out there? No, here. Oh, okay. No, I'm well, saying like when, like I built this, when I built this room, okay, yeah. I didn't mind going to the Pro because I was like, I'm building this new thing. This is I need your, a new TV. Your, your place. Why not go up with the PS4 Pro if I'm already bu- buying a new TV? If I'm going to buy a new TV, I might as well get 4K HDR. Yeah. These were all these things that I saw. I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. But – Past the pro, I don't like the idea of constantly having to think, well, this game's going to perform even better on this one. Uh, do I really want to go up to that one? This game is even more. Because, you know, the pro is one thing, and you see games being optimized for it. Uh, some games actually end up optimized worse for the pro, and, and some in some people's opinions. Well, I mean, World End's talking about it, and I do get what he's saying. Sometimes games actually run at a lower frame rate, even though they're higher, they're at a higher resolution. Than when yeah, because that's so, the trade-off. You get, you get the higher resolution, you're going to get lower frame so rate. So it gets to be weird. But, By the way, I don't know if it's, if it's everywhere, but like, Super sampling mode enabled on Monster Hunter on my PS4 causes frame drops and bad ones. Wow, yep. really? So that's that, just that. Well, hold just on, that. but you shouldn't have to have super sampling mode on because Monster Hunter automatically supports super sampling. That's what I'm saying. No, no, you have to go in and click the option in 5.5 to turn that feature on. I know, but just so you understand, the reason that that option's on there for system wide is because early on, Never before did I, unless it's a Monster Hunter. Update. It may be that you you have it on on a game that already supports it natively in the in the, de- the development but kit. But never, yeah, I was gonna say never before did that that uh, feature pop up. Super sampling mode. Yeah, I'm sure because and, now it's a feature wide, and if right. you've turned it on and you go in, it's like and I it's like made, boost mode, right? Yeah, boost mode makes some games perform worse. And I, but I've been getting terrible frame drops. That is interesting, but I mean, and I, I, do, I wonder if it was with the update that came out like two weeks ago of Monster Hunter now. Because if it, now that I know super sample has always been a thing, yeah, uh, no, because I definitely did not notice a difference. Again, we 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 were you know we rely on people to keep us honest. But as far as I understand, and like and me and World End had the conversation already said this anyway. There was a couple of games early on when the Pro first launched that the developers were giving the Pro um, enhancements on a development kit for the Pro that did not have super sampling built into the development kit, right? Yeah. And now it's it's, it's more complicated than that. But this is the you know dumbed down version of explaining it. Since then. Games, games that have had this newer dev kit that automatically has super sampling supported, the games automatically do it if they can. Uh, the, it just doesn't the notify system, you. The system-wide super sampling happens on games that are old enough that had pro enhancements but did not have the super sampling. That way you get it on those games too. Well, see, and now, now I'm sad because when Blaze was complaining about frame drops, and I'm like, I've never seen one. Now I do, and now it makes me mad. And it's only <laughs> in certain moments, but like I'm well, telling you. I just turned the super sampling off if I were you. That might be a thing to do, yeah. Because uh, I, I I went in and turned it on the second that feature came out. But to end the conversation on my side is that like it's really cool um, and I love an idea. It would never happen, I don't think. Um, and even if it did, it'd be much more limited to what we're thinking it will be. 
Um, but yeah, uh, and and then see on the other side of the coin from Brett is that like I am not only a, a PlayStation enthusiast, obviously I'm a PC enthusiast. And I actually, I'm a tech enthusiast. That's why yeah. I want to leave it because I love PCs. Well, I like but going, I don't play games that many. I like. I, I like, would. I would honestly love to build PCs for people. I like going into PC game options and stuff and checking all the stuff to put to customize it. To be it fair, I like doing that. Like remember when I was showing you the what were uh, no, it was uh, vanishing of Ethan Carter and I was running yeah. at a 4K 60 and I was like, look at this. Yeah. And it was good. Uh, it's fun. It's fun it to is. realize how crazy this technology could push that and be and like, in, wow. And in a, in a made up world, you know, I think that that is a thing that would be really cool to see. Because uh, I picture it to be like, uh, uh, like maybe twice as tall as a PS4 Pro is, but then have like these modular blocks that you just trade out. That'd be so cool. Yeah, that's like, how I think again, it would work. As, as a tech never, enthusiast, yeah. that would be super cool. And that's that's how it would be cool to work, but that would never be possible because that's not how any computer components work. You still would have to screw them in for stability. Well, the idea could, and it could be like, you know how you clip, you don't you don't screw, but you can clip your, your processor down? Oh well, yeah, that's it's used the tension bar. Same goes for RAM. You pop your RAM in. To yeah. Your, to so the, you could uh, you could do it. Whatever they're called. You, know, you can have you can basically have sets where you set it and then it'll have. But some graphics kind of cards, you know, you do that with graphics cards. You still got to screw them into the back. So that's true. They're got to be so, stable. I yeah, know. I think it's a cool idea. Um, I don't think it'll ever happen. I think it'd be cool to see it happen. Uh, but realistically, um, just play what you want to play and play it how you want to play it. That's yeah, that's agreed. And much. and I will say that the only to me. It is more not going to happen from Sony's business side because it doesn't make sense to them to basically... They're gouging themselves out of the equation in a way that's unnecessary for them. Now, if the market starts to push that way and they have to, maybe we see a change. You know, GameStop is a company that is, continues to have to try and update itself and diversify and change itself to fit in with the times. But Sony's not there right now. Sony's Sony doesn't need to do something to try and get ahead of people when they have a smart, obvious path forward that's doing well right now. Ride the wave until things start to get rocky. If they get rocky and the, and the solution seems to be somewhere in that ground, and then, work then start to figure it out. Then start yeah. to figure out what's the best way to do it. But don't fix what's not broken. Yeah. And yeah. you have you have a great market that's supporting you as a company, specifically PlayStation. That's what we're talking about. Um, why would you Why would you change it up that way when they're not fighting against you? So that's all I'm saying. Now, maybe if there was a vocal outcry of people saying they wanted this, it would happen. Or at least it would be discussed and there would be like a serious, hey. And I am I guarantee you that Sony's probably are indeed something to see what it would be like and how viable from, from a business perspective it would be for them. I guarantee you they've are indeed everything. I guarantee you that there is a Sony handheld oh, no, there is. that's new, that's r and that they've probably done multiple just to see what they think would work, just to always keep themselves ready to hop on any kind of market things that they need to hop on because that's what a smart business does. A smart business does not take itself out of the equation. And one of the, going back to Discord one more time, you know, we talk about business decisions. One of the business decisions about Microsoft that is a weird thing is that Microsoft is making a lot of business moves that really isn't smart for its Xbox division from a hardware perspective. It is smart from a software perspective, but they are they are removing their own hardware from the equation with almost every move they've made. So yeah, it's, it's super weird. It's, you it's, you it's, just it's, have to let com companies have to do what works for them. Sony does not have Microsoft to fall back on. They don't have Windows to fall back on. They need to make their console their console. This is the thing they do specifically with PlayStation. They don't need to rely on something else. They have a great formula that is doing well for them right now. Continue it forward. Yeah. But anyway, I agree. thank you. First of all, this is going to be the, the end of the episode. Uh, but thank you so much for letting us do this for a year. We say it all the time. We are the one we do it, but y'all allow us to do it by actually communicating with us and interacting with us. Uh, I mean, talking with us on discord, messaging us on Twitter, emailing us, giving us questions. I mean, everything, if y'all did not consume this, I would not have the drive to keep doing it. Yep. I appreciate, I mean, even if it was five people that were doing this dedicated, I appreciate We'd every single here. one of you. Yeah. And I just want to say, no matter how big we get, that's if we ever get any bigger, if we shrink back down, I enjoy doing this because of what, I mean, it gives Just me the friends we found along the way is worth it. it. It's great. I love it. And I mean, I want to do this as much as I can. I would love to do this as a living, 
But honestly, even as just a extracurricular hobby slash job, because it's I treat it that way, still really fun. And I rewarding. love doing it, and yeah. it's super rewarding. So thank you all. And I know I'm speaking for Saul too. I mean, I would have never imagined I'd have a year worth of people just listening to me rant about something I love. That's uh, that, even that's even though crazy. sometimes my opinions are wild and crazy, and people don't agree with them. Like uh, the fact that the order is a not perfect, but a solid eight point five out of ten. That's what I must say. I don't even like giving scores to games, but damn it, I'm going to do it this episode. I'll say a solid eight. I paid five and I, and bucks. And see, I, I, I paid, respect that. I paid five bucks for it, though, so I know people would. Um, and I got the platinum. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, be sure to check the link in the description for anything there you may want to find. Like we said, you don't have to support us on Patreon, but we would greatly appreciate it if you did. It really... Uh, is it not necessary? It's about uh, helping us keep the show going and expanding the show. Right. Or expanding the channel. And I will, as one more thing, well, if you're still listening, uh, the Patreon is Nartech Gaming, which is our, for YouTube, is our umbrella thing. And the reason we've set it up this way on Patreon and on YouTube is that we like the idea of being able to expand this outside of just Triangle Squared. We want to do more if we can. Uh, and as we do that, we need an umbrella to fall under. So that is why the Patreon's Nartech um, Gaming. We like narwhals and technology, so we just shove them together. Um, narwhals so are sick. It's, it's, you know, we, we appreciate everything that y'all have done for us. Uh, and we appreciate letting us do the things that we do for you. I know that there's been a lot of people who've done a lot of very nice things throughout this past year. We've had people give us PSN cards. We've had people that the, you know, Liam co commented on my shirt that had the PlayStation symbol on the sleeve. I didn't even buy that shirt. I'm not just going to, I'm not going to holler out and say who did it. Cause I know that there's some, some people like to just do things and not necessarily be showered with praise on them, but we appreciate it more than, I mean, anything it was crazy going to PSX and having a group of people that was just like super fun to be around and, I think and talking. It was extremely bought, fun. The same person who bought that shirt for you technically bought Kyrie a shirt <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, sure. So oh, anyway, love you, we you know love you, you all. I seriously mean that. I love every single one of you that interacts with us and listens to us and lets me rant and ramble on. But until next week for episode 53, this has been triangle squared. Thank you so much. Thank you guys.